Jill said you women should take off your high heels. The rest of you should lie down. <laughs> My Lord, talk about commitment standing all this time. Thank you, Doc. I appreciate that introduction. I really do. My name is Joe Biden. I am Jill's husband and Kamala's running mate. <laughs> you all think I'm kidding. I want to thank, uh, start by thanking Kamala for taking the, the lead on this issue and so many other issues in our campaign and our governing. And I want to thank Jill and Doug for their work uh, shining a spotlight on the issue affecting women. And I want to thank all of you, Emily's List, NARAL, Planned Parenthood, for your endorsement. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Your support was critical last time around, and we we're so grateful for it, and we're working hard with, with you again. I can't think of three organizations who <laughs> will do more, have more consequential impact on the right and the ability to regain freedom. You know, uh, you have troops on the ground in every single state, and we're going to need all those troops in those states. We want to thank Nancy Pelosi, a good friend who's been an ally and friend of mine for a long time, as well as the many members of the Congress that are here and elected officials from all around the country. To state the obvious, and it's clear by now, it's almost redundant to say it, this fight really matters. It really, really matters. Since the day the Dobbs decision came down, <clears throat> one year ago tomorrow, we've seen the devastating effects all across the country. Women turned away from emergency rooms, denied life-saving care. Moms, college students, teachers, nurses, traveling hundreds of miles to get basic reproductive health care. And we just heard from Jill, who's heard the stories firsthand. You know, we've all heard the stories firsthand. People come up to you, people we've known, people we've grown up with. You know, and since that dark June day last year, each of you has worked tirelessly to fight back. And the Dobbs decision, the court particularly, practically dared the women of America to be heard. This is the majority wrote. Women are not without electoral or political power. You ain't seen nothing yet, court. Well, I really mean it. Think of the challenge that is. I said at the time that I didn't think the court, for that matter, the Republican Party knew for over decades have pushed their extreme agenda, have any clue about the power of women in America. I said they were about to find out. And by the way, in the midterms, when we were supposed to be blown out, they did find out. And they're going to find out again. I really believe it in my heart. I believe it. Look, we were, we were, we were criticized for making this an issue in the midterms. In fact, I got attacked for it. But, you know, all along, what Kamala and Doug and Jill and I knew as well, the Americans would not stand by and let the court take away the right that's so fundamental. That we'd fight, we'd fight to restore these protections of Roe v. Wade and make it the law of the land once again, and we're going to do that. And we will let, let the most personal decisions fall in the hands of politicians instead of women or their doctors. The court was betting that all of us would remain silent. But my mother had an expression. She said, Joey, never bow, never bend, never yield. Just get up. Yeah. Oh, you think I'm kidding. You didn't know my mom. <laughs> that, the America, that the women of America would remain silent was just beyond comprehension. That Kamala and I would remain silent. Well, we're not. We will not remain silent. And all over this country, thanks to the hard work of the voters, delivered a clear message. In Kansas, in Michigan, in Kentucky, in the polls in November, Americans voted to protect the woman's right to choose. In fact, you all showed up and beat the hell out of them. No. So what's really remarkable is despite the will of the American people, MAGA Republicans have made clear that they don't intend to stop with the Dobbs decision. No, they won't, until they get a national ban on abortion. Speaker McCarthy has said, quote, our work is far from done, end of quote. Senator Lindsey Graham wants to, <laughs> wants to criminalize doctors and nurses to provide medical care for their patients. Make it a crime. Republicans in Congress have proposed three national abortion bans just this last year. Well, make no mistake about it. 
If somehow Congress were to pass a national ban, I will veto it. <laughs> Let's also be clear that this decision also risks risk the broader rights of privacy for everyone. That's because the fundamental right to privacy, which Roe recognized, has, has served as a basis for so many other rights that are ingrained in our fabric of our country. The right to make the best decisions for your health. The right to use birth control. You, you ever think we'd be arguing about that? No, no, I'm serious. The right to marry the person you love. <laughs> Judge Thomas said as much in his concurring opinion in Dobbs, writing, quote, for that reason, the future cases we should reconsider all the court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell. These guys are serious, man. I, I said it when the decision came out, and people looked at me like I was exaggerating. But they're not stopping here. Make no mistake, this election is about freedom on the ballot once again. Look, we made so much progress. We can't let it take us backwards. I believe that one of the best ways to continue making progress is to ensure women are at every table where every decision is made. And that's not hyperbole. That's not hyperbole. I promised that my administration would look like America. My cabinet is the first majority female cabinet in history. You just heard from the first woman ever vice president of the United States. And perhaps the most critical of milestones, we mark tomorrow, we are reshaping our courts. We've appointed more black women to the Federal Circuit Courts of Appeal than, than than every other president in America history combined, combined. And of course, I was proud to keep my promise to appoint Justice Jackson, the first black woman in Supreme Court. And by the way, she's smarter than the rest. She is, I'm serious, she's incredible. She is genuinely incredible. We're also making progress building an economy for all Americans have the opportunity to work, raise a family, buy a home, start a business. We made historic investments in child care, making it more affordable so parents can work and provide for their kids at the same time. The first major piece of legislation I signed, the American Rescue Plan, provided historic tax relief for millions of families, helped to recover child care costs. We have the largest increase in history of child care tax credit, the dependent, the dependent care child tax credit. We helped 200,000 children care providers stay open in small businesses, continuing to go through the pandemic and continue to serve more than 9.5 million children. This thing's matter. I signed legislation increasing funding for child care development block grants by 30 percent, helping low-income families afford child care. But there's so much more to do, and we're fighting over abortion. For example, the United States is still one of the only countries in the world that doesn't guarantee paid leave. I remain committed to changing that. Bring us in line with every other single major economy in the world by passing a national program for paid leave and medical leave. We can get all this done and so much more. We can restore the protections of Roe v. Wade and make it the law of the land again. But we're going to need your help badly. So let me ask you this. Do you think your colleagues are with us? Yes. Well, I tell you what, they better damn well be. <laughs> After the decision came down, I signed two executive orders. My administration took a number of actions to protect the access to reproductive health care. And it's just the one I signed, the third executive order, which is to strengthen the affordability of high-quality contraception. The idea that I had to do that I mean, I mean, no, really, think about it. Think about it. I know I'm 198 years old. <laughs> but all kidding aside, think about that. I never, ever thought I'd be signing an executive order protecting the right to contraception. But the only sure way to protect a woman's health and rights is for Congress to pass a law. As I said before, the court got Roe right 50 years ago. 
And I believe Congress should restore the protections of Roe v. Wade once and for all. So we need your help. So I'm asking him, are you with us? You're going to get this done? I really mean it. So let me close. Let me close with this. Over the last week or so, we've seen extraordinary support from three of the most important voices in the country coming together to get behind this campaign. Organized labor, climate leaders, and all of you representing the powerful groups fighting to protect the advantage for women's rights. Your strong support, your determination, your, ag- your advocacy are why I've never I, — I know I've said this before, and I want you to listen to it again. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. <coughs> I have never been more optimistic about America's future than them today. And with your help, Kamala and I are continuing to make the progress. We're going to finish this job. We just have to remember who the hell we are. We're the United States of America, and there's nothing, nothing beyond our country if we work together. So God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Let's go get this done. Let's get it done. Thank you.